Well, okay, well. Good ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tana, and simply for this part here, what I'd like to do is explain briefly that Mo Darko. Now, Mo simply meaning to hold, Darko means stick. Now, I'd like to introduce a few of our weapons, bringing our warriors onto the stage with the first of them. This considered to be our most deadliest, this weapon, it is known as the Ipatsu. Now, the Ipatsu, it is a short hand out club. It is held here by our warrior, Kari. This weapon comes in three different shapes of one of them. The EC here in particular it is known to us as the Mere, simply sharpened around the edges. The word Patsu comes from the word to strike. Now, movements that were done with this weapon, we have what is known as Kokirikiri. Now, Kokirikiri, these are our foot movements. They depict the massive movements of our birds here in New Zealand, keeping our warriors nice and light on their feet. Now, how in the hands of a very skilled warrior, such as our warrior Kari, the Patsu can kill a man within three seconds. That is the first of our weapons. The Patsu. The next of uh, the weapons that I'd like to bring onto the stage is one that is considered to be the most commonly used uh, for the mark. This weapon that is known as the Taya. Now, the Taya it is a poor staff, and it is held here by our warrior. This weapon, we have taken the abstract forms of our ancestors to carve them for them to fit in particular so for this part. I'd like to explain the parts to this weapon. Now we begin with what we know as the Upo or head. Now protruding from the end of the head, we have what is known as the vertical protrusion of the tongue. With the fine features of the Maori, we believe with protruding of the tongue as showing a sign of intimidation. <laughs> 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 he intimidated that baby. Moving on, we have the mix of our hearts. It's a the body of the eyes of the weapon. Now we have a set on each side, a label of our shells. Please protect the warrior from all four sides. That's a weird part. We move along to the other hair of the Taya. Consists of many different resources for today. We have local old feathers. They are used as a form of distraction in order for our warriors to be able to strike. We move along to the upper up, Tinana, the body of the weapon, where this weapon is held and maneuvered. The deadliest part we have part in the side plates, which is a button used to thrust into our enemy. That is the second of our weapons, the player in our warriors. <laughs> so for this part, I'd like to bring both of our warriors onto the stage to introduce what we know as Borwa. Now, Borwa, these are our basic strikes. The strikes are concentrated in parts such as the head, the neck, the body, and the legs. We have the first of our strikes to the head. Like to share with you ladies and gentlemen. So you'll see the slapping of the bodies 
the lies of many arms. These were messages to our enemy that our people would prepare for their hits and their blows. You see, the fact that all they are which is the protrusion of the tongue only performed by our men. This gesture is to make the enemy feel intimidated or can mean the violence. To support our men, you see the wahine come in the haka later on in the haka. The women did do the haka, not at the battlefields, but we did the haka before our loved ones, our brothers, our sons, our fathers, our husbands left our villages. It may be the last time we see them before their journey is to their battlefields. So mentally, physically, emotionally, but most definitely spiritually, we did the haka to watch upon our men, to call upon the spirits of our guardians to join them as one, to protect them, to guide them throughout their march. So ladies and gentlemen, do enjoy our final item, your performing group, Te Whanauro Kura, Me Te Haka.